everybody. Welcome to the 4 to 5. I almost said the 5 to 5. Oh, <laughs> no. That is, that is not a show. <laughs> this is a show. Eric Jill, Lauren, Coleman, Cindy Moore. Hello. Uh, it's, um, uh, we're going to have fun today. Yes. Yeah. Lots, yeah. lots of fun. I have to say, I had a blast at Fun 4th in downtown Greensboro mm. yesterday. But I'm so glad to be back in the AC with you guys. Well, you yes. look good out there. Thank I mean, you, you did a great you. job. You and Tim. She was so, so excited, sure. I man. know. You did great. It was fun. <laughs> Tim was out there, too. Yeah, I got him to weather. dance. I was trying to get him oh, to do the wobble funny. with me, but we did a little dance off at the end. So <laughs> I have it posted to my Facebook page if you didn't see it. It was funny because it's a split screen and you see Lauren, then you see Tim, Tim. And they're both doing the thing. Mm -hmm. it was, I love it. It's I all about it. energy, good energy, That's yeah. right. good vibes. All right, we've got a lot to talk about weather-wise too. Uh, you know, a couple of isolated storms out there today, but nothing really major. That's good. Yesterday, we just escaped all the way around, didn't we? That's really unusual for the fourth for us not to see at least an isolated thunderstorm or two here or there. So temperatures right now, and that's a live sky cam you see back there. 87 in Greensboro, 91 Winston-Salem, 85 Burlington. You're going to see some bigger temperature differences across the region because whoever has seen a little bit of rain, they will definitely be much cooler than the neighbor across the street. You know, that's how it works here in the summer. So look for an isolated shower or two. Now what it feels like when you factor in the humidity, we're up to 90 in Burlington. These are not actual temperatures, right? And then 96 in Albemarle down at Pinehurst and Southern Pines. They're pushing 100 degrees for the feels like index 98 down there. All right, 71 for the overnight low tonight. Still can see that evening storm already seen a couple. 89 for tomorrow, partly sunny, and our forecast is pretty consistent over the next few days. Here's what it looks like from a thunderstorm standpoint. Some of these in Randolph County, they've just been stubborn. It develops and just kind of sits where it is and rains itself out. Now that's good that the storm doesn't last that long, but not good that it just sits there and dumps a lot of rain. So this flash flood warning for that section kind of south of Ashboro and east of Ashboro over to Siler City, that will run, run until 530. So a, a considerable amount of rain for that area. You zoom out to the wide shot. It's a typical summertime pop up late day shower or thunderstorm day. Here's what your seven day looks like. So we'll stay in the upper 80s. That'll be for the next couple of days. Um, hold that into 80 89 for Thursday, Friday, but rain chances only a 30%. All of these are late day. The weekend rain chances go up a little bit with the passage of a front, but it'll also cool us down 88 and 87 for Saturday, Sunday. That's a 50 50 shot of those showers and storms and then back to more normal 40 to 30% for Monday and 86 and we'll build back to the upper 80s with a 20% chance rather dry really for next Tuesday and Wednesday. New at four Thomasville police are searching for a woman accused of stabbing her grandparents. Police say they responded to Bergen Street in reference to a stabbing. They say 32 year old Kristen Lynn Billings allegedly stabbed her 37 year old grandmother and 75 year old grandfather multiple times. They were transported to a local hospital and are in stable condition. Billings has been charged with two counts of assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill, inflicting serious injury, and one count of interfering with 911 communications. If you have any information on Billings' location, please contact Thomasville Police or Crime Stopper. And Winston-Salem police say a woman was shot in the chest while watching fireworks last night on North Main Street. Police found 51-year-old Sylvia McKellar lying on the front lawn of a home suffering from a gunshot wound to her chest. She went to the hospital for treatment. We're still working to find out her condition. Investigators think she might have been struck by a stray bullet. And over in Greensboro, police are still looking for who is responsible for shooting three people late Monday night, including a toddler. Police say 66-year-old Theresa Johnson and 21-year-old Chestani Jones were shot and killed on Blackmore Road in Greensboro. A three-year-old was also injured in the shooting. At last checked is in stable condition. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers. A man has been sentenced for second degree murder after a deadly wrong way crash in 2022. This comes after Rubisil Diaz Hernandez drove north in the southbound lanes of I-40 near Trollingwood Road, hitting Kier Vanessa Witherspoon. Hernandez was sentenced to 13 to 17 years in jail. Many people will be heading back after celebrating July 4th, but severe weather could make it harder on millions flying. Cancellations and delays piled up at Denver International Airport yesterday. These headaches come just a week after weather caused major delays before the holiday even started. 
United Airlines is making it up to customers distributing 30,000 miles to travelers whose flights were canceled or delayed. On the roads, AAA expects more than 43 million drivers during the holiday week. Gas prices are nearly $1.30 less a gallon on average than the 4th of July last year, which is making drivers breathe a sigh of relief. It's been on my gas. I pulled my gas up this morning and I feel great about it. And I spent under 50 bucks, so I'm feeling happy. If you are driving, make sure you plan ahead and leave early to avoid extra traffic. So this was the scene yesterday at Sheets gas stations across the triad. Lines of people trying to fill up their tanks with discounted gas, but not everyone was able to top off their tanks. Several Sheets locations ran out of the fuel on sale. Gas is now back to normal prices. The average in Greensboro sits around 319 a gallon. That's significantly less than the national average, which sits at 350. All right, so we asked you on Facebook, what are some pet peeves you have? at the gas station. This is one of mine too. I hate this. Rob says when you get that receipt and it says the clerk inside has your total. Yep. Yes, <laughs> cannot stand that. All right, Darlene says someone blocking the pumps and done getting fuel. Carolyn says people parking in front of the gas pump and then not getting gas. This was the common theme. And Sean says parking at the pumps and then you go inside. He said if you're finished pumping the gas, Move your car. That's, mm. that's a big one because sometimes you go to the gas station and the car is just there and then the person comes out with two weeks worth of groceries. Yeah, right. And I'm like, that is just selfish and disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. I have two of them. One okay. of them would be, yeah, see the cashier inside. I'm like, that. man, I just want to sit outside. Now uh -huh. I have to take a trip and go inside, but okay, mm -hmm. I guess I have to do it. And then the other one would be when all of the, if somebody's tanks is on like the yes. left side. Oh, And so yes. you have a small lines of car and then somebody on the right side comes in breaks up the line. So now we're having to shift direction, so to say. I thought you were going to say when you know it's on one side of the tank and someone takes the hose Oh, and, and tries and to get pulls all the it way over. over. I've never seen someone do that Oh, before. I see that all the time and I'm just like, come it on. It won't now. reach. So <laughs> this is nobody's fault because they can't help this. But when I pull up, I always try to pull. So let's say you've got one side uh, uh, with no cars. Okay. I always try to go all the way to the end okay. so that someone can come in behind me and use the pumps behind me. Because if I pull up to the very first one, then I'm irritated. You know what you know I'm yeah. saying? I know exactly and I'm irritated when somebody pulls up and faces me if their gas tank's on the other side because then I can't just yeah. leave. Yeah. I got another one in Sydney. You probably have experienced this. Okay. The pickup lines at the gas station. The pickup lines. Pickup lines. I was at the gas station a couple weeks ago. Oh, and I'm getting no. gas. You know, I'm just trying to get in and out. And this man, <laughs> he, he looks at me, then he does another, a double take and goes, Make sure you save some gas for me. Oh, the pickup uh, lines. Uh, like yeah, I know. That, it took me a minute <laughs> yeah. to figure oh, out what okay, she was saying. Okay. Make sure you save some gas for me. <laughs> I'm thinking, you couldn't you have get, came up Ladies, with you get all the better. good compliments at the <laughs> gas station if you ever got a bad day. You know, it's been, hey guys, a little hint. Don't try to pick somebody up at the gas station. Here, you're too do pretty to do can. that. Let me ha handle that gas for you. <laughs> all right, we're coming right back. <laughs>
Here's an interesting story. What if you could talk to your loved ones even after they die? A man in Michigan is working to make that possible through virtual reality technology. Yeah, he even started a business, one that he says is the first of its kind in the world. Here's a look at how it works. Comes out the side. Christopher Moore first tried virtual reality with a friend's headset. Within a week, I got one myself. First At first, out, it was for playing games, but it became more after his dad, Mike. He was my hero. Got cancer for a second time. He originally recovered. We got another 10 years with him. But that time slipped away quickly until he died last year. Everybody would always like more. Thanks to his headset, he got more. I just wanted to try to find a way that he could leave a message behind for my siblings or my mom to try to help them through the grieving process after he's already passed. Moore's idea, a virtual video recorded before his dad died, letting his family grieve by talking with him. In my video that I have of him, uh, he tells me that he's proud of me and that that alone, being able to go back and reflect onto that, um, it's, it's priceless. Now, he wants to share that feeling with others. His company, More to Give, will record a loved one with a 360 degree camera saying familiar things. Words of encouragement or moral values or um, old phrases that they would use. In familiar places. It's not a studio, it's not a white room, it's home. Like this video, Moore's brother recorded for his kids. When he walks up to the camera and uh, he starts to leave them their heartfelt message. You guys mean the absolute world to me. It's a feeling Moore says can't be described. If you never have to use it, you never have to use it. But if for some reason you ever had to, I mean, it's, it's priceless. And one he knows his dad is happy to leave behind. I'd like to think that he's proud. Um, I've tried my best for him. In Kent what are your thoughts? I know before this story aired, you guys had some questions, but now that you've seen it, what are your thoughts about him using this virtual reality with grieving? Yeah, Eric, can you take it away first? Well, for, uh, so for me, I've thought about this, and mm -hmm. I'm, I want to do it while I'm healthy, and I don't want to wait until you get a diagnosis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I've said for years, and I've got to sit down and figure out when to do it, I just want to do a message for my wife and kids and just tell them everything I can think of about mm -hmm. myself because my dad passed away in 2003, and I have a million questions that yeah. you don't think of asking until it's too late sometimes. So I def I'm, I'm doing that. Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, it is a, a good opportunity and thing to do, you know, for loved ones, um, especially. I think for me personally, I, it might be a little too much for yeah. me. I think I would personally just kind of like to journal to them, um, visit grave sites, maybe do some things like in that yeah. nature. But this kind of reminds me of the scene in Avengers. I don't know if yes. you all seen Avengers, okay, when Iron Man passed away and he left um, a video just like this. Yep. And he was sitting inside of his home and his daughter was right in front mm -hmm. of him and he was kind of talking and telling some stories and you said, I love you 3000 yeah. and he's oh, sitting right that. there. But it was pretty cool, yeah. interesting. I mm -hmm. think it could be a great pick me up. I've seen a movie movies or where people, they hold on to the voicemails on their phone so they can listen to yes, the, the yes, sound yes. of their loved one's voice. So in this setting, it's kind of like it brings it to life, seeing them right in front of you. Mm. And beyond, you know, just for you to get that pick me up, maybe for your children, if mm. it's your, your parent or your grandparent that never got to meet them, you know, they can learn who That's their true. loved one was. So I think there's a, some benefits. I, I definitely agree with you. Journaling mm. can be a great thing as and well. And passing too. down their jewelry or yeah. uh, things of that nature too, to hold on tight to them as yeah. well. It's a good thing there. All right, we're going to take a break. We're coming right back. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Can you hear me? Hello there.
You know, summer means hot weather, kids complaining about being bored, and sometimes frustrated parents. We know that. Parents, worry no more. We have the answer for you. It helps all of us here. For the kids, it's the Carolina Theater's Kids Club, and for adults, it's their Summer Movie Festival. I spoke with Megan Cope about the Carolina Theater to see what's going on. All right, Megan, so my favorite definitely is the Summer Film Festival because you get classics on the big screen the way Absolutely. we should be seeing them. What, what can we look forward to? Oh, of course, we've got a little bit of everything. That's the magic of the Summer Film Fest. We can really pack the schedule and we, of course, have those deep classics, those Hitchcocks. We even have uh, Boris Karloff in The Mummy from 1932. Whoa. So some deep horror in there and then some campy fun ones like Greece and South Pacific. And we even have our resident organist coming in. Mark Anderson will be here doing a trio of silent comedy shorts. We'll be here for you. I can see the Grease sing along. Absolutely. As we speak, nobody listens to Grease and doesn't sing. Um, and then the, the flip side to this is that you also have the Carolina Kids Club. Now, how does this work? Because I used to host this thing, yeah. but it was a long time ago. <laughs> Tell me how it works. Yep, this is sort of a reimagining of the Circle K Club that was here in the 50s but we've moved it to Wednesday mornings. It's a $5 all-inclusive ticket. You come in and you'll be greeted by the Music Academy of North Carolina in the lobby with a musical petting zoo. So if you've ever wanted to uh, pet a violin or you know maybe learn a chord or two, they'll be there for you, among other instruments. Yep. Then once you come in, we've got some trivia to warm the kids up while everyone's getting here. And then our friends from Mad Science come out on stage and do some educational, interactive entertainment. And then we all settle down and we enjoy a family-friendly movie. And that $5 ticket also gets you the snack pack with popcorn and a drink for the kids. I mean, see that kind of deal, like you don't get that anymore. Here's what they do well that I will tell you, because with kids, you know, the attention span is probably 10 yeah. minutes at a time. <laughs> yeah. So you keep it moving, don't we you? We do, we do. We try to get the wiggles out, maybe a little dancing in the seats <laughs> beforehand. And we try to make it a fun morning for everybody. And just the joy and awe on the first timers that come in when they look up and see the chandelier or the little voice is going, is this a castle? It's oh, like, cute. no, it's a theater. You know, nobody lives here, but you are welcome to come in and see a show anytime you like. Phenomenal. Um, real quick, out of, I'm putting you on the spot, yeah. out of the, <laughs> the movies for the Summer Film Fest, do you have one that's your favorite that's gonna be? I am a sucker for Rear Window, and that one is kicking us off on Monday. The classic Hitchcock, it's just my favorite. I mean, it's great. you can't go wrong with Grace Kelly and Jimmy Stewart. That's I mean, true. come on. Jimmy Stewart, I mean, what are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, then it all starts next week. Right? Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so I love the classic <laughs> movie. I'm, I'm, I know you do, because it's, no, it's classic no, movies. Yeah, um, but it's, it's movies you can't see on the big screen anymore. So for me, I, I wanted to see Grease. I'm going to be out of town, wouldn't you know? Um, but one of the things they do, and I, Lauren, you would love this, after the movie, and it's not necessarily tied to whatever the theme the movie was, uh -huh. they have a dance party on the stage. Oh, fun! So they just have a That's DJ, really they play honestly. music, and they turn all the stage lights on, and everybody in the audience can get up on the stage. This is for the adults, too? Yes. For, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, no, only the adults. Oh, That's only, just for oh. the, yeah. You know, it's I was going to say, it's only for away. the fun movies. You're not going to see it in a rear window. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, if they did it, you may window. not want to dance after that I was about to say, after that, we're like, oh, yeah, wait, what? Like watching Psycho, and then, yes, I'm going to get up there and dance. I love the kid portion in that there's a learning element to it too oh, with yeah. the science experiments and then for what is it five dollars you get snacks and popcorn you get popcorn That's and really a drink cheap. and a snack and then all that other stuff too and they keep it moving your kids will not be bored as yeah. someone who frequents movie theaters a lot five dollars is a steal, a steal when it comes to all of that yes. because again while I have like uh, you know I got I, I'm the type of person who has like all the little bells uh -huh. and whistles so I get like deals and whatnot but the average person spending like 40 yeah. bucks you've taken a family Easy. five bucks ten bucks you guys ten bucks have oh. you ever seen the meme it was like the AMC theater one where it's like a drink, a candy, and a bag of popcorn, and it's $99.99. .99. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally like it's, that. It is, That's it how is it is, expensive. sadly. But they're a great selection of movies yeah. to choose from, honestly, from the kids to the adults to the family, everything in between. Yep, the kids, I know two that I noticed is Moana and Princess and the Frog. They're doing oh, okay. those, so they're classic. A lot of, most of them Disney movies. So. Classic Disney movies, again, I'm waiting for them to like, where's like the real classic? Where's Peter Pan or Alice yeah. in Wonderland, you know? I'd like ones to see the original uh, yeah. mermaid. Mm -hmm. Some of those true. people, come on. All right, we'll be right back. No, I think we're, oh, we're talking weather. weather. No, weather. Oh, I think we I are. stand corrected. <laughs> yes, let's see if we have thunderstorm activity out there. We have, we've had it, but we're not seeing as, as much of it right now. See, Lauren trying to get me out of here. She said, scoot on out, children. Uh, here's what we see with temperatures. All right, we've got 87 degrees in Greensboro, 91 in Winston-Salem. There is that B again. Can you see that thing? Yeah. Look at that 
thing right up against the lid. I hate that. I'm going to block it here. You don't need to see that. It's gross. 91 degrees in High Point, 91 in Winston-Salem, 80 in Ashboro. Big differences in uh, temperatures from 77 in Siler City and then just up the road in Burlington, it's 85. Guess who has the rain and who hasn't had the rain yet? So a lot of that shower activity in Randolph County and heading over to Chatham County as well. Dropping down to the upper 70s by 9 p.m., mid 70s by 1 a.m. Can't rule out an isolated shower or storm, really, to be honest, at any time, even in the overnight period, we're that unsettled. But uh, nothing major and we don't expect severe storms out of this. You may get an isolated one or two. And let's zoom in down here. I want to show you uh, earlier it was showering pretty heavy just north of North Wilkesboro, moving east towards Surrey County. So a little light rain there around Dobson and Surrey County. But to the south, these showers are just consistent and they, they develop where they are and they rain themselves out. There's nothing really pushing them along. So that's good and bad, right? Doesn't stick around too long, but it's still there long enough and just sits over you that you get this flash flood warning until 530. That's for Randolph County from Ashboro east over to uh, Siler City. Generally speaking, when you look at the whole ball of wax here, we're just a little bit unsettled across the region. Late day afternoon pop up storms and thunderstorms. That is normal for us this time of the year, and we're going to see it again and again and again. It's a summertime pattern. It just repeats all the time. Seven day forecast rain chances are at a normal 30% for Thursday, Friday with high temperatures at 89. Uh, cool it down a little bit with the passage of a cold front, but that also brings rain chances up. It's a 50 50 shot for Saturday, Sunday. High Saturday 88, Sunday 87. Comfortable on Monday, 40% chance of rain in 86, and then we'll start to dry out a little bit. Still it'll be muggy, but only a 20% chance of a shower Tuesday, Wednesday, and highs build to uh, 88 and 89, and pretty much across the board overnight lows, 68 to about 71.
Well, when you think of weddings, you might think of standard formal outfits. Brides wear white, grooms in a tux, and guests do their best not to overshadow the couple, of course. But that is not the case anymore. Couples are now starting to branch out and create themes people can dress to. Mm -hmm. Some couples ask for suggestions from their guests ahead of the wedding. Others say this is the vibe we are going for this, so please dress for it. It doesn't have to be a full costume unless the couple ask. Just changing out a tie or wearing a certain hairstyle, and of course, there are plenty of people just not having it. So get this, one couple in New York even asked a llama to dress up. Oh, I think he looks quite handsome. Adam and Tara might have struck to stuck to traditional outfits for their wedding, but the llama wearing a suit definitely stands out. These are some pictures from a company called Llama Adventures Facebook page. Uh, Jay the llama was decked out and even stood with the groomsmen during the vows. Uh, after which everyone wanted to get a picture with the formal farm animal. Now talk about overshadowing the, the couple there, but no, yeah, he I, was definitely, he definitely, oh, like, yeah. I mean, it looks like he was almost on a one knee there. I didn't know. I don't know what I expected the llama to look like, the but it was thing. not this having the full suit. It looks like, like a he's person. just standing there. I think that is super, super creative and definitely to get uh, the crowd excited and happy. But um, have you all ever been to a themed wedding before? Not you a themed wedding. Yeah, not a themed okay. wedding Destination. Either. Yeah. Destination. Um, so recently I went to a wedding and it was a all black theme. So everybody had to wear a black formal and that uh. was really nice seeing everybody dressed up. But I've also, I know a few years ago, there was an NFL player who had a Walking Dead themed. Uh. A wedding. Dead thing. Yes, really? and, and the bride and the groom, they dressed up like zombies and so did everybody in the bridal party. And so wow. I was like, now that's really creative, but they were diehard uh, Walking Dead fans. If you do and that. So they did want their guests to take part in it. Yeah, I mean, everybody dressed up like zombies. It was almost better, like Halloween. Um, and uh, I'm, I was like, wow, they really went all out for this. You better yeah. play the Thriller song and have everybody dance and to it. And everybody go like, that. you got to do it. Yeah, you got to do the whole thing. It's exactly My right. thing is, if it's, is, if it's your wedding it's and your that's day. what you want, yeah, that's then right. that's what you it's, want. It's you your know? day. And I, I think, you know, as a guest, you should go along with it. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen, you know how it is in newscasts, we show the underwater wedding the weddings mm -hmm. uh, hanging from bungee cords. Mm -hmm. We've seen it all. So yeah. you do whatever you feel like. Doing. Hopefully you only get married once, so you want to do it big. You want to do it big. That's <laughs> right. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to your four to five. Eric, Sydney, and Lauren mm. with you for the second half hour. It's our halftime. That was our halftime show. Yeah. That's all we got for you. Have a good half. You having fun on the four yeah. o'clock? I am. I'm having fun. You know, you, you both are pretty fun people, so I mm -hmm. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. We have been known to have a good we time. We have been known to, <laughs> to be the party crew. <laughs> you, you know, you she, always do the little shoulder She's always got That's the moves. That's my little thing right there with the little shoulder moves. Always we with love the moves. To see it. If you could just see during the commercial breaks, yeah. so we play the song. I'm, I'm going there. down, putting on a whole Broadway show for these people. <laughs> got it going on. All right, let's talk about our forecast. Hey, we've got, um, you know, typical summertime pattern. So we're kind of stuck in that, but you know what? It is summer. And that's what we're supposed to do here. If we just we see that generally kind of upper 80s to low 90s on and on, right? It goes on and on. A, an evening storm, pretty much likely. I mean, anytime you see a summertime forecast, typical is 30 to 40 percent chance late day showers. I will say this weekend with the approach of a cold front, we might get a little extra boost with a chance of a shower. So we'll go with a 50 percent chance for then. But still, the timing is the same, so it's not like a washout type situation. Evening storm tonight, otherwise partly cloudy, low 70s. Winds are fairly light. Tomorrow we make it up to 89 degrees, partly sunny. And again, that isolated storm had a couple of those already in Randolph County. It's developed everywhere from Ashboro down to the southern tip of Randolph County, even in Wilkes County, northern Wilkes County about an hour ago. Now that's starting to drop apart a little bit. A lot of these are developing and then kind of staying where they are or just meandering a little bit, drifting. And then that means you get a decent amount of rain. So the cell we had earlier in Randolph County from Ashburn over to Siler City uh, dumped a decent amount of rain. I mean, some of the rainfall estimates were over two inches of rain in a short amount of time, uh, but that can cause some flooding. So we have the flash flood warning in effect until 530. They're getting heavy rains right now again in Seagrove area right down 220. Uh, these are pop up showers and storms. We'll see more of that as we head into the evening with no real rhyme or reason. They just pop up anywhere and we're in that pattern for a while. You see the stationary front just kind of lingering over us before it fades out uh, over the next 24 to 48 hours and then the approach of that cold front will help us with rain chances for the weekend, but then it'll also cool us down on the backside of that cold front. So let's look at the seven day outlook. Typical stuff, 30% chance pop up late day shower or storm. That's for Thursday, Friday. We've got 89 degrees for those two days and then 88 on Saturday. We start to cool down with the passage of that front 88, 87 Saturday, Sunday with the coolest day being Monday and 86 and we're back to a normal 40% chance of those showers on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a little bit drier, a 20% chance and we'll warm back up to the upper 80s. That's where we're supposed to be. Eric, thank you. Well, yesterday was hot, so hot it broke the record for the hottest day ever recorded. That's after Monday broke the previous record. That's according to the U.S. National Centers for Environmental Prediction. The average global temperature reached 62.62 .62 degrees Fahrenheit. In Phoenix, temperatures got to 116 degrees. Wow. In North Africa, some regions reached 122 degrees. Even Antarctica had strangely high temps. This is shaping up to be the hottest dog days on record. But did you know the dog days of summer actually have nothing to do with our canine friends? They started on Monday and go until August 11th. This time of year gets its name from a dog, but probably not the one that you're thinking of. It comes from the Sirius, which is the dog star, which is the brightest star in the sky. During the dog days of summer, this star rises and sets around the same time as the sun. So the ancient Greeks and Romans thought the power of these two stars is why this time of year was the hottest in the northern hemisphere. All this heat has officials warning people do not leave your animals in the car, especially in this heat. A dog recently died in Colorado after being left in a car while investigators say the owner played golf. The owner was issued a summons for animal cruelty. Temperatures in cars are a lot hotter than outside. For example, if it's 70 degrees outside, the inside of a car can reach 104 in 30 minutes. If it's 95, the in-car temperature can reach 129 degrees in a half an hour. Experts say parking in the shade or leaving the windows down has very little effect. If you see a pet left in a hot car, call 911. In the dog days of summer, you might find some buzzing mosquitoes surrounding you. Yeah, they're annoying and around your furry friends as well. So experts give some tips to avoid the buggy biters. Dr. Michael Neely is the chief of infectious disease at Children's Hospitals Los Angeles. He says mosquitoes are more than just an itchy inconvenience. The bugs can cause illness like West Nile virus with flu like symptoms, but there are ways to limit your exposure to mosquitoes. He says making sure there's no standing water in your yard can deny mosquitoes a place to breed.
Just a teaspoon of water is enough to, to harbor those mosquito eggs. But it is impossible to stop every mosquito. Thankfully, Neely says insect repellent containing ingredients such as DEET are useful. Also wearing long, light colored, loose fitting clothing as well. Cancer patients will soon have an easier time traveling to their treatment. The American Cancer Society gave almost $100,000 to Atrium Health for cancer patient transportation. The money can be used for gas cards, bus passes, and ride shares to help patients. These funds will help patients who might delay care, which can lead to a higher chance of death. Some North Carolina athletes won big at the Special Olympic World Games in Berlin. Aaron Cagle competed in several artistic gymnastic events and took home the silver in vaulting. She also placed fourth in the all-around competition. Philip Blunt won the gold in shot put and finished fifth in the 100-meter race. So congratulations to both Aaron and Philip. Yes, congratulations to them. Well, the Greensboro City Swim Meet kicks off tomorrow. Thousands of triad swimmers and their families will compete at the Greensboro Aquatic Center. We'll give you coverage of the event starting tomorrow morning. It runs through Saturday. Summer means barbecues, but the secret to getting the perfect cook is something grill masters work towards their whole lives. A Texas professor is using science to make the most finger licking barbecue possible. Yeah, I moved here for this job. As an associate professor of chemistry and biochemistry at UT Dallas, Jeremiah Gasson Smith has performed plenty of important research. Mm -hmm. But few things are as important to Texans as his latest project, barbecue. It comes down to um, understanding the science so that you can do better at perfecting your technique. For the good of science, last spring, Dr. Gasson Smith taught an honors class about barbecue and shared the science to smoking a great brisket. And so, as you likely already know, temperature is vital. It's what will make or break down collagen. Collagen can be your friend or your enemy. Dr. Gasson Smith says collagen is a protein that's wound together like strands of yarn. Collagen will melt at about 160 degree Fahrenheit. Too little heat, the collagen won't unwind and the brisket will be chewy. Too much heat, collagen will wind tighter and it'll be dry. High salt content actually helps the collagen unwind a little. Once you successfully unwind collagen, some of that melted protein will rise to the surface. That actually helps create the bark. Nanoparticles from smoke just sticks to the surface, and those smoke particles stick best with water-based liquids. Let me take it inside. If you make it that far, it's time to wrap it up. Wrapping helps retain moisture while the middle of the brisket finishes cooking, and that's pretty much it. Since you understand the science, you make a perfect brisket every time, right? No. <laughs> I suspect that'll be forever before I'm actually really good. Until then, keep cooking. Um, and of course, eating, because I like to eat. Me too. Mm. Can I just say this? Okay. If I find out that an expert in science is making my burgers and hot dogs and stuff for, for the 4th of July, that's got to be a, a great thing. Yeah. Because they, they're going to put their all into mm -hmm. it, know the different ingredients. I'm all for it. The science behind it the all. The science I, behind it I love it, it. They always say low and slow, right? Yep. So low mm -hmm. heat, but for a long period of time, there's nothing better when the, whether it's ribs or brisket, mm. when that meat just falls off the bone. Oh my and You don't gosh, have to pull Eric. it. Mm. Uh, have Please. you guys seen Barbecue Showdown on Netflix? I have not. Now that talks about all the science. So it has uh, the best like grill masters in the country. They're competing against each other uh, okay. for like $50,000. And they go through different competitions where they're not using the traditional grilling equipment. So it has to do a lot with the science, the physics of it all. I That's mean, cool. some of the, com the the challenges are like blow your mind that you really have to know what you're doing yeah, to you do, do For sure. Yeah, yeah. I have to check that out. Yeah, it's really, really good. I binge watched it in like two days. <laughs> and that's why they use a lot of like stones and brick because the right. heat's so even and the fire's not directly mm -hmm. on it. You have to heat it all uh -huh. and then let it bake in there. And sometimes uh -huh. it's a pit itself, like, you know, when you're cooking a pig oh, or a, a hog, pig, yeah. you're not necessarily doing it on a grill, you're doing it underground and you won't really know if it's dry or not until you actually cut it open. Also, so you have to know that science. All we do is talk about food, by the yeah. way. I also, hey, I'm down with that. Also, <laughs> I love the cooks that have the special sauce and they won't yes. tell you what yes. it is. Oh, yeah, like, tell me, tell me, tell me. It's so good. And they're like, if I tell you, I gotta get you. That's right. We'll figure it out. Vinegar based sauce. So good. We'll be right back. Mm.
Yeah, it's called milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together like a classic combination. Fireworks, yeah, you know what, they're done. Parades, they're done too. But the July 4th deals, you know what, they are still on. Fourth of July sales are in full swing. This is an especially major sales moment for big ticket items like grills, large appliances, and mattresses. All right, so when it comes to mattresses, the Casper Original Hybrid, it's a top Consumer Reports pick. A queen size is $300 off the original price, so it comes in around that $1,200 mark. It's at Amazon, Best Buy, and at Casper. Now, when it comes to those large appliances she was talking about, a washing machine, this Electrolux, also $300 off at the Home Depot. Ooh. Consumer Reports says the model aced its test for washing performance and efficiency. Now, this is my favorite of the day. The charcoal grills dates back to the 1960s, but this char grill or barrel grill, it is Wi-Fi enabled Ooh. and has a hopper feed system for adding more charcoal. Okay, people, wow. that high tech part right there of the grill, it caught my attention. To think that you don't even have to just worry about the cooking. You only have to worry about the cooking. You don't have to worry about doing anything else to make the cooking happen. So my sister has a smart grill okay. that she got Delicious. for her birthday a couple years ago. My dad got it for her, and so she can control the temperature from her phone. Yes. And you're able to get, Gosh. like, cooking recipes and ideas from it. Uh -huh. And she uses it. She she enjoys it a lot. I have the wireless temperature probe. I use that mm -hmm. on my phone so I can see what the temperature is. See, but I feel like it would take away from enjoying the, you know, the, the step by step process because that my dad is it's like therapeutic for him to uh -huh. be at the grill just mm -hmm. you know I love it but it's really cool and I also think because maybe he's done it for such a long time because it okay. takes a while right yeah. to get to be a really good griller That's a good right point. and to know how to do it mm -hmm. so if you're new to this mm -hmm. right and you're just like why does it flame up all the time yeah. why isn't it hot over here why is it cold over there then maybe this is like your thing That's right because I've actually never really grilled on my own before so I might need something well, like every that. grill is right. different I'm gonna tell you mm -hmm. that ours we have to turn all the way down to one because it cooks too hot. Always. Oh, interesting. Ooh. So I had a conversation with Jalen yesterday, and he's like, hey, go enjoy some barbecue. And I said, do you normally have barbecue on July 4th? And he said, because I'm like, I'm a hot dogs, hamburgers yeah. kind of girl. And he was like, barbecue is whatever you cook on the grill. 
Yeah, yeah. that's how I see yeah, it too. Because too. Okay. my parents, they'll Australians make say that. hot dogs, hamburgers, ribs, like I was just talking uh -huh. about, barbecue chicken, salmon. salmon. Yeah, and listen. they call oh, it no. a barbecue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. a cookout, a barbecue. barbecue I, I think cookout. it's all of the above. So I've heard that too, yeah. but for Southerners, I think in a lot of cases, it's kind of like hamburgers, hot dogs. Listen, oh, if you're right. out there on that grill, so whatever touches that grill. Because if you but say, come over to my house for a barbecue, I'm expecting pulled pork. Oh, and I don't only think that. I've ever had pulled pork with my family. Oh, oh. 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 Yeah. Like, then he was like, "How do you live in North, North Carolina?" Carolina. Right. I was like, "You've been here I've long had enough." Pulled, pulled pork, but not for an event. I've always usually just eat like hot dogs. Gotcha. Yeah. Stuff like that. He was about to know, take you like, right to the cookout. I was. Right? I was like, okay. "We're leaving right now." <laughs> All right. So back to the sales. What if none of the items that I mentioned today are on your? Yeah, I think I would like that list. Well, no problem because of this. Amazon's annual Prime Day sale is happening this July 11th and 12th. Basically everything is going to be on sale, but the discounts are exclusively available to Prime members. So you'll need an account to shop the sale. All right, besides the Amazon Prime, look for competing sales at other retailers like Target and Walmart. Walmart Plus members get the sales first, but then they go right to being public, and that's July 6th to the 13th with their special stuff. Target Circle Days are July 9th through the 15th, so you can cash in really almost anywhere. Did you wake up this morning with tons of leftovers from July 4th cookouts? So what are some clever uses for those leftovers? I asked you on my Facebook page. Mike Matthews says, depending on what you grilled, chicken can be used for grilled chicken salad sandwiches. Normally burgers can be heated or can be reheated in beef broth and eat it in the next day. Sausage is similar with vegetable broth. Gloria Smead wrote hot dog for breakfast with eggs scrambled over it. I saw your face, Sydney. Uh, Ginger Graham said, depending on 
what you have left over, but you can get creative with tacos and bowls, huh? John Imler said, feed the homeless. Mm, yes, Great yes. idea. And then Larry McCross said, no leftovers. They cleaned <laughs> us out. Yeah, I'm with Larry on yeah. that. I'm like, we don't usually really Not have much that left. many, you know, leftovers. We had some hot Except dogs left over. Yeah. And I, I brought one of those in today with an ear of corn that uh -huh. didn't get eaten. I don't, I don't think I have any creative ways I use the, the leftovers. I usually just eat the leftovers. I might eat it for breakfast. Yeah, um, that's but, a good point. But, or, or if it's chicken, maybe just pull it off and make a sandwich out of it. Yeah. But um, I think the taco idea sounds pretty That creative. sounds really good. Well, you know, yes. protein bowls are the thing. So Yeah. I have to be honest, I've, I've never tried the hot dog and the egg yeah, combination. I saw you call me out a little <laughs> bit, but I've never. I would try that, but it, it can't be. A picture it's it. got to be like, um, you'd have to put some kind of spice on the hot dog to make it like a sausage. Because sausage and eggs, yeah, it's good. that oh, makes man. sense. And, and that's what I was thinking. Oh. I think it sounds funny because it's not something we usually do, but I can see sure. it tasting tasting good just with yeah, the different. Yeah, me too. I love the flavor of egg. You know, we love a burnt hot dog. So I think together that could actually work. Do you like your hot dogs burnt? Burnt. Oh. They have to be black. See, not me. My <laughs> not wife. Not all the way, but <laughs> they have to have some char. Not all the way black. <laughs> I mean, some people like them where they look like a piece but of But I charcoal. do like the line yeah. going through, yeah, it, like yeah, multiple yeah. lines going through. But I still want to see them. <laughs> like, so you're like, eating a like, stick <laughs> like you had a stick with a bun in it. No, I can't do that. All right, let's, <laughs> let's, let's look at our forecast and see. What, that's a thing. Every year. For cookouts, they have a meme that shows the levels of, you know, of char on a hot dog, and everybody always gets into arguments over it. I like mine right in the middle, right, right in the middle. 71 for the overnight low tonight, evening storm, partly cloudy. 89 tomorrow with an isolated late day storm. Yeah, it's the same old, same old, really, with the showers popping up here and there. Randolph County, you've had a lot. I mean, a lot of this rain is just developing there and just sitting. It's not really going anywhere. There's nothing to push it. I mean, we have light winds coming in out of the southwest, but it's not really giving that the shove out of here. We did see some heavier rain in northern Wilkes County before. This is another uh, storm and we see some lightning strikes. You can see that on the radar here just south and west of Seagrove. But because that has been raining over that area for a long period of time, you may see several inches of rain there. We did have a uh, flash flood warning in effect uh, for that area. They have canceled that early as a matter of fact. So more of the same as we head into the night. You can't rule it out at any time. Really the stationary front just kind of lingers over us and slowly fizzles out, but that keeps us humid and with those late day pop up storm chances going 40 to 50% when we get to the weekend with the approach of that cold front you see there that'll kind of increase the shower chances. So here's what the seven day looks like. We're at 89 degrees the next two days, very similar to where we were today. 30% uh, chance of a late day isolated pop up storm. We'll bring that up with the approach of that cold front. That is a 50% chance for Saturday, Sunday. Don't think that means that we'll see a washout day. It's really more just more chances of the late day pop up storms. 88 and 87 for Saturday, Sunday. Monday's the cool day of the week at 86. We will. That's a welcome relief from those low 90s we were seeing. 40% chance of late day storms that day and then a little bit drier for Tuesday, Wednesday. Let's keep that at a 20% and we'll build back to where we should be this time of the year. 88 for Tuesday and 89 for Wednesday. There she goes, there she goes again. Hey there, Lauren's showing off for Facebook, making us look bad because we can't sing like an angel. Hello, we're talking and singing and dancing. Okay, maybe not the dancing. 
Microphone check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Check microphone. Mic hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. Y'all are singing and dancing, and I'm sweating and standing. How about that? Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. A powerful Helen Keller quote that emphasizes the power of community. I've lived in Greensboro just over two years and it's been a wonderful experience. What I've loved most is the way the community always finds a way to come together, whether it's in a time of need or just for fellowship. Yesterday, millions of Americans celebrated our nation's Independence Day. Here in Greensboro, we celebrated with our annual Fun Fourth Freedom Fest. It was a time to remember. Dozens of food trucks and vendors lined the streets of Elm for several blocks. There was live music and street performers. There were games and even weddings. This grand event wasn't just about fun. It was also about giving back. This year's fest was even more community centric with the inclusion of a blood and food drive. Thank you to the hundreds of volunteers who helped make this year's event so successful. Thank you to our News 2 viewers who showed us so much love at our News 2 treat trailer. When asked how I would describe the triad, I say family, because togetherness is what it's all about. That's my two cents. That's your four to five. WFNY News 2 at five starts now. We start with evening storms popping up in the Piedmont Triad. Ted, these storms, they are slow movers, so they really can dump a lot of rain yeah. in one area at a lot, uh, in one time. And that's what we're finding today so far is that those storms that have been popping up, they're slow movers. But the nice thing is that there haven't actually been too many of 